What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, so that's how it's going to be, is it? Oh, so that's how it's going to be, is it? You're my role model, Luther. I want to be just like you. One of me is quite enough. One of me is quite enough. Theo, tell him to stop copying Theo, me. Theo, tell him to stop copying me. He's driving me round the bed. He's driving me round the bed. <laughs> We all have people we look up to, don't we? Someone we admire or want to be like. Maybe it's our parents. Maybe it's a teacher. You want to act like them. Perhaps even look like them. To be like someone, we have to spend time with that person. As Christians, we want to be like Jesus, don't we? Jesus said that in order to be like him, we must abide in him. What do you think it means to abide? Some people think it means to abide by a set of rules or to abide by the law. Others think it means to bide one's time. Still others think it means to not tolerate someone. Like, I can't abide that person, your thing. While these examples of abiding may be true, they are not what Jesus meant. When he said that we must abide in him, he talked about the relationship between a vine and its branches, just like these. In order for a branch to bear fruit, it must abide in the vine. The branch receives all of its nutrients from the vine, which makes it able to grow and bear fruit. Without the vine, the branch can do nothing. Jesus said that he is the vine and that Christians are the branches. The Holy Spirit who lives inside believers provides the spiritual nutrients to help us grow and bear fruit. Let's take a brief look at the life of the Apostle Paul who truly understood what it meant to abide in Christ, even though he suffered greatly for his faith. The life of the Apostle Paul is a wonderful illustration of someone who truly understood what it meant to abide in Christ. The Bible records that the Apostle took at least three and probably four missionary journeys. During each of his journeys, he faced many trials and tests. But that did not deter the apostle from fulfilling his upward call in Christ. By Paul's own account, he had not only been put in prison, but he had received 40 lashes on five separate occasions. Three times he was beaten with rods. Once he was stoned and left for dead. He was in danger from bandits. <laughs> Three times he was shipwrecked. On one occasion he spent a day and a night adrift in the open sea. But God protected him. His faith remained strong and so did the peace of Christ in his soul. Paul learned to be content in whatever his circumstances. What was the secret to his contentment? The Bible says that Paul spent much time in prayer. Paul knew what it meant to be still before God, to abide in his presence alone. It was in prayer that Paul gained God's perspective on life and circumstances. In prayer, he realized that God was in control of all things, great and small. All the ups and downs of life, the times of rejoicing, and the times of suffering. To pray is to abide in Christ. 
Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst. Paul knew that believers are members of the body of Christ, each having spiritual gifts to help build up one another. To fellowship with Christians is to abide in Christ. Paul's understanding of God was rooted in Scripture. He knew what the Scriptures said about God and about His Son, Jesus Christ, and about the gift of the Holy Spirit who indwells believers. Paul abided in the Word of God daily, for as the Bible says, Jesus is the Word of God. At the end of his life, while awaiting execution, Paul wrote, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have entrusted to him until that glorious day. Paul knew the peace that passes all understanding. He had been a good and faithful servant. He had learned to abide in Christ. What was the secret to the Apostle Paul's great peace in the midst of trials? There isn't any secret. He knew how to abide in Christ. By obeying God's word, by listening to God in prayer, by fellowshipping with other believers, by doing the works of love that flow from our faith, we will bear much fruit, and no matter what our circumstances, we will be able to bear up under them, because we are abiding in Jesus. There, lovely. <laughs> Theo has the best grapes. Mm. Theo has the best grapes. Uh, um, Belfry has fleas. Or, uh, Luther has fleas. Ruth! Ruth! What are you doing, Belfry? <sighs> or should I ask? <laughs> 